Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. We've grown accustomed to regarding the US as the most powerful country on Earth. Since the end of World War II, it's been the economic powerhouse that's dictated terms to the rest of the world. War production created the world's most modern factories, allowing for a post-war boom in manufacturing goods of every description. The fact that the US held two-thirds of the world's gold by the end of the war enabled it to dictate that the US dollar would be the default currency for trade. And later on, the creation of OPEC ensured that all gas and oil would be settled in the petroleum. The resultant overwhelming economic power enabled the US to assume the role of the world's policeman with a defense budget that equaled that of the next 10 most powerful countries combined. But all that power led the leaders of the US empire to assume that it was omnipotent. In 1971, they went off the gold standard, and over the ensuing decades, the US went from being the world's largest creditor nation, to its largest debtor nation. The US can no longer produce goods, as its ever-increasing union labor costs have priced it out of the market, even for local consumption. It's now dependent upon China, Mexico and other countries for virtually all goods. And yet, the US is threatening those countries with controls. With help from the FATF and OECD, the US has become an economic ball and chain to the economies of the first world, and, to a lesser extent, beyond. The US is now a hollowed-out empire. By any measure, it's a Goliath that's likely to fall in the near future. But recently, conditions have been exacerbated to a degree that's unprecedented in the post-war world. In March of 2021, the US made the fatal mistake of confiscating privately held assets of the Russian people. Although this was seen by Americans as just punishment for Russia's invasion of the Donbas, the rest of the world saw it differently. The leaders of even small countries took note, realizing that the rulebook had just been tossed out the window. If the US could seize foreign privately owned assets in Russia, they could do it anywhere. Although almost no one in the US noticed it at the time, more than two-thirds of the world's countries quietly began to create treaties with China and Russia, seeking to build a new alternative to the robber empire. Although this still appears to be insignificant to Americans, the change has taken place, quickly, and substantially. Scores of new treaties are now in place, and more are on the way. The world is now rent in twain. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end, to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. Saudi Arabia moved decisively to shift its loyalty to China, along with other OPEC nations, assuring that the petroleum will soon be no more. New treaties have been inked to allow the world's countries to trade in their own countries, bypassing the dollar, assuring that the US dollar as the reserve currency is also on its way out. An entirely new global paradigm is underway, one that's not even on the news in the US. Americans are blissfully unaware that their country is now a house of cards, looking for a strong wind. That strong wind has come up in the Middle East in the form of a war that promises to break the bank of the US. The US pours $830 billion into the military-industrial complex annually, for weaponry that has been outmoded, in some cases, for decades, while other powers have continued to advance, and, today, far outweigh the US militarily. Add to this the astonishing stupidity of American leaders to choose this time to emasculate their own military. No matter how supportive a country may be of Garrites, a de-emphasis on masculinity and the armed forces creates a military that no red-blooded man wants to be a part of. The US armed forces are gutted. Be assured. This is not simply a country experiencing a downturn. 
it's an empire in its death throes. The wit. The most prosperous cities in America are in dramatic decline. Downtown areas are filled with the homeless and the drug addicted. Those who loot stores are not prosecuted, leading to a crime epidemic that's closing entire blocks of previously successful shops. Entire downtown areas are unable to support commerce, leading to an emptying out of cities. Banks are laying off tens of thousands of staff. Competent workers cannot be found. They may have credentials but can't finish tasks. They maximize sick days and otherwise fail to show up for work. Simple business tasks fail to be performed. Deadlines can't be met. Retiring older workers cannot be replaced with motivated replacements. Businesses are chronically understaffed, restaurants cannot serve customers, mechanics leave cars unrepaired, trash isn't removed, flights are cancelled due to airline staff failing to turn up. Most countries recovered from lockdown mode, but in the US, literally millions of people have chosen not to return to the workplace. Elsewhere in the world, the opposite is occurring. In Asia, in particular, there's tremendous enthusiasm for new growth. New businesses are being created. Even in communist countries like Vietnam, it's possible to stand on a street corner and see countless peasants setting up shop on the pavement each day. Capitalism in the making. None of this is a random occurrence. Countries have a life cycle. Empires have a life cycle. The level of prosperity a country achieves at its height is directly proportional to the severity of its eventual collapse. The first world, particularly the US, is indeed running on empty and can be expected to go down, literally, in flames. From inside the US, it's difficult to understand that the remainder of the world began its consolidation and rise 18 months ago, and that the new dominant power is rising rapidly. The non-first world recognizes that this is not the end of the world, but a global shift in predominance. We're presently witnessing the early stages of the collapse of the world's greatest empire. That's difficult to even conceive of, let alone picture. Yet, the early events are unfolding and are in evidence before us. If we bother to read the tea leaves, we'll see that the larger events are about to play out. It's entirely possible that, by 2030, we'll be watching the dust settle on the past empire. But history advises us that dying empires do not go quietly. In every case, they attempt to hold on to their dying power through warfare. If no war is needed, one is invented. The excuse for the war is unimportant. What matters is that there is conflict sufficient enough to subjugate the people of the empire into sacrificing their rights in favor of their country in its hour of need. And it's also true that even a dying power can do massive damage on its way out. Whether you live in the US, another first world nation, or an outlying nation that's likely to be less affected by the unfolding conflict, it would be wise for you to distance yourself from the fray. A dying lion is a dangerous beast. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.